veganism falling apart at the seams before our very eyes as YouTube vegans, celebrity vegans, come out of the closet and admit the degeneration, both physically and mentally, that they've experienced on a vegan diet. We've got Tim Sheaf now this week coming out saying that he just can't do it anymore. He cannot be a part of this movement that was destroying his body and his health in the name of the animals. He's not willing to sacrifice his life for the crickets and the cows. And the vegans are pissed. But don't worry, guys. Plant-based news and Dr. Garth Davis are going to save the day. But first of all, first off, let's get some announcements out of the way. And let's give a special thanks to plant-based news owner Khalid bin Al-Walid. Khalid bin Al-Walid, son of Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, one of the richest men in the world, owner of Citigroup, Twitter, 21st Century Fox, and JD.com's major owner and all of these international companies. <laughs> An owner of a 420-room uh, palatial estate that cost $300 million to build contains 1,500 tons of Italian marble, rich silk carpets, and copious gilding. A palace packed with stuffed animals that the prince shot on hunting trips. His favorites, are wh which are a lion, pictured, and a zebra he killed on safari with his daughter. He's got indoor swimming pools, 45-seat underground cinema in the palace, 250 sc flat-screen TVs, and four state-of-the-art kitchens that can feed up to 2,000 diners. We just want to thank you guys for all the philanthropy that you're doing to save the planet, to give us a sustainable, healthy future that is plant-based. Obviously, you guys are just going to probably make a few bucks along the way, especially since Prince Khalid's holding company is one of the biggest investors in the Beyond Burger. But we want to thank Prince Khalid for not only promising us virtual sea life centers where we can experience the wonders of nature behind VR goggles. We want to thank him also for giving us beautiful lull cows like claps from Plant Vice News for us to constantly milk here. Um, here's a Freaking hilarious video with Dr. Garth Davis. We're going to go through this so-called Dr. Garth Davis's recommendations on how to deal with your desire not to be vegan anymore when your health, both physical and mental, start failing. Garth Davis will help you figure it out. Let's see what he's got to say. Now, I'm not going to touch this sub subject again. It's just, it, it's really, it's completely inane. You're not going to see my other physician and scientist acquaintance and colleagues even mentioning this, but I am getting tons and tons of messages from people absolutely petrified because there's all these young millennials on YouTube who were vegan and are no longer vegan. And they're posting these videos, why I'm no longer vegan and are they right? And should I not be vegan? And is it ruining my body and all that kind of stuff? And I don't know. It, it's crazy to me. I mean, it's absolutely crazy because these are kids posting this stuff. I mean, these are like young kids, a lot of them with eating disorders, who are posting videos about why they are no longer vegan. I did not become vegan because I saw a YouTube video. So we shouldn't listen to people who are no longer vegan because they're kids. They're kids. We shouldn't listen to kids. If anybody is young and healthy and they start losing their health on a vegan diet, you can immediately discount their experience because they're kids. And also, Garth Davis didn't become vegan because of a YouTube video. So congratulations, Garth Davis. You are a boomer. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. You're not a kid. You're an adult, Garth Davis. Good work, buddy. That told me to become vegan or a, I wasn't, I didn't see some guy and think, oh, that guy's vegan, therefore I should be vegan. I did it because of science. Um, I did it because of research that I did. I did it because of how I saw a whole food plant-based diet work to people. I did it because of the environment and finding out what animal products and animal agriculture does to our environment. Okay, so he's throwing out a lot of these blanket statements. So science says that a vegan diet is good. This is absolutely untrue. In fact, the scientific literature all shows that a vegan diet is totally deficient. You're not going to be getting vitamin B12. You're not going to be getting fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A in its retinol form. 
right, which is very different from the carotenoid form of vitamin A. Very few of us can, uh, can actually transmute the vitamin A that you're getting from carrots that is not the retinol form into the fat-soluble retinol form of vitamin A. When you deprive pigs of vitamin A, they were born without eyes, blind, with an undeveloped central nervous system and brain. Yet Garth Davis is saying, the science says that we need to eat a vegan diet. This is very dubious. This is not scientific. And just simply declaring the science says is not science. Fortunately for Garth Davis, most of the audience at you know, plant-based news and some of these other propaganda outlets are not intelligent enough or are not well-read enough and have not been taught critical thinking skills. So they're not going to catch this. But then he says, I was also vegan because of the planet. I want to save the planet. So this is the argument that veganism usually resorts to. When the health argument falls apart, it's, uh, the vegans say, we're going to save the planet. Well, you know who else is trying to save the planet? Citigroup, Twitter, 20th century, 21st century Fox owner, Prince Al-Walid, who's also investing in the Beyond Burger who's also investing in other tech companies that are all about so-called sustainability. You know who else wants to save the planet? Bill Gates. How's Bill Gates going to save the planet? Well, by reducing the human population. So this whole talk about speaking for the planet, this whole assumption that somebody like Garth Davis, who spent a few years in undergrad, then went and got his uh, PhD so that he could become a bariatric surgeon, just because somebody who's got a few degrees on their wall behind their head says it is so does not make it so. So you don't speak on behalf of the planet, Garth Davis, and you have no idea what's going on. Right? In order to actually feed ourselves in a so-called sustainable manner, animal agriculture is absolutely necessary. A lot of vegans talk about converting, farm, uh, converting graze land and pasture land into farmland. You can't do that. You can't grow wheat, corn, and soy on the same pasture, on the same land that cows pasture on. There are different types of land that are suitable for different uses. Cows, ruminant animals, play a very important part in soil regeneration and the soil microbiome, and removing them from the human food supply is disastrous, as we can see the results of this right now. Not only on vegan YouTube, but also in the greater context of the Western diet, where fats from animals have been replaced with fats from seeds and oils from plants. Soy oil being the main source of fat that we're getting now, diabetes, cancer, and degenerative diseases, sarcopenia, depression, anxiety, all of these things have skyrocketed in conjunction with this massive shift in our diet towards the industrial foods that people like Prince Khalid are promoting to bring us sustainability. So your argumentation totally falls apart here, man. There is not an ethical argument on behalf of the planet for vegan diet. But let's hear Let's hear him out. Maybe he's going to make some sense. Let's hear the man out. Let the man talk. I did it because of the absolute torture that happens to animals. Which brings up a point. Veganism is an ethic. So I don't know. These people that say I'm leaving veganism are basically saying I'm changing my ethics, I guess. Um, I know true vegans. True vegans are vegan for the animals. I mean, they don't... There you go. So Dr. Garth, using his medical license... To push veganism, to shill for veganism, using this as a platform to promote himself within the vegan community. Come on, let's be honest, guys. I think Garth David gives a shit about you. Garth Davis wants that money. Garth Davis straight up admits right here that it's not about health. Even though he'll make arguments for health, he knows it's bullshit. He says it's about ethics, it's about the animals, it's about a religion, it's about an ideology. It's about your presuppositions. It's about a worldview. They don't have a drop of leather. They don't even wear wool. 
uh, and they are completely dedicated to helping protect animals. And they are they would and they've never even seen or touched these animals they say they speak on behalf of. They've never seen or touched these animals. They want to feed cats and dogs vegan diets. <laughs> Never leave veganism because they got a zit or they got gas. That just, that wouldn't even come up in their mind because they're so strongly for the animals. The okay, so he's also saying here that these kids who you shouldn't listen to, who are just a bunch of idiots on the internet, don't listen to them, listen to me. He's saying that they're leaving veganism because they had a zit or because they farted. He's recognizing, he's verbally recognizing right here that the vegan diet is causing gastrointestinal issues with these people. That people's health is falling apart. But he wants to downplay it. He wants to minimize it. This actually, in some ways, hurts the, the vegan movement in, in, in this one manner. A lot of the studies done on vegans use ethical vegans in there. So, for instance, the epic study that was done in Oxford, there were a lot of ethical vegans in that group. And when you looked at their diet, it was very low in fiber, and some of them didn't even get 500 milligrams of calcium, so they had extremely low calcium levels. And so the, you would then make these generalized statements about vegans. So just totally obscuring any research out there. I mean, it, this is this is very deceptive. Let's back it up a little bit, and let's hear that again. They're so strongly for the animals. This actually in some ways uh, hurts the, the vegan movement in, in, in this one manner. A lot of the studies done on vegans use ethical vegans in there. So for instance, the epic study that was done in Oxford, there were a lot of ethical vegans in that group. And when you looked at their diet, it was very low in fiber and some of them didn't even get 500 milligrams of calcium. So they had extremely low calcium levels. And so the, you would then make these generalized state. So he's saying that, and, and this is, how can you document this at all? How can you quantify how many ethical vegans were actually in this study? Very strange claim. He's saying that these ethical vegans, because they're not eating a very healthy vegan diet, the data skews towards showing deficiencies because of these ethical vegans. This is, I mean, way to throw shade on it, man. Wow. V very, very deceptive. But pretty intelligent. It's a, a lot of the audience will probably use this argument. Right? A lot of the people who watched this video will probably then go on to actually use the very same argument, which is terrible argumentation. Let's hear him out, though. Statements about vegans and their health. Um, and by the way, they were still extremely healthy, but they would have been even healthier had they followed uh, a more balanced diet. But they're not in it for health. Uh, they're in it for the animals. And so these YouTubers that are leaving veganism, they're not vegan. They're leaving their previous diet. And let me tell you. Ah, so they're not vegan. They're not really vegan. You were never really vegan. So Dr. Garth Davis basically becoming <laughs> the epitome of the stereotypical vegan YouTuber. You were never really vegan. Uh, are, you, are you directly quoting Freely the Banana Skank? Or did you make that one up all by yourself? The diet that these people are doing are not the diets that Dean Ornish or Esselstyn or especially Furman or myself tell. <sighs> Dean Ornish, Esselstyn, Furman or myself. First of all, Furman doesn't even recommend a fully vegan diet. Patients to eat. It's not even in the same realm of what we tell patients to eat. I mean, these people, look, they're millennials. I, I was the same when I was 20. I went from one thing to another, one interest to another. And they were, they go to these unbelievable extremes. They're doing nothing but juices. Like, what's amazing to me is they'll go on like these juice diets where they're basically just, it's, they're just taking in sugar. That's all they're taking. They're, they're hardly getting any fiber. They avoid some of the key nutrients. So they, a lot of them, like, for some reason, it's like, just they can't even believe that you would ever cook food, which is, look, it's crazy to me, but, so, they, they Dr. Garth Davis. So, just being the voice of reason here, right? They're all millennials. They're all doing fruitarian diets. They're all doing this crazy stuff. Whereas anybody who's seen a lot of these ex-vegan videos, 
and I've probably seen as many ex-vegan videos as anybody out there. I've done dozens of interviews with former vegans. In fact, we actually sponsor quite a few vegans in our Keto and Carnivore Collective, our community coaching that we do every month. And every single month, we're getting more and more ex-vegans coming to us for consultations and coaching on how to use a low-carbohydrate approach that is based around animal fats and proteins to recover from their vegan deficiencies, from their health failing on a vegan diet, from their digestion failing on a vegan diet, from their mental health getting completely twisted up on a vegan diet. We talk to these people all the time. They're not just a bunch of dumb millennials. <laughs> these people are trying these more extreme diets because the ethical vegan diet sucks. Right? They get on a straight vegan diet, they feel a little bit better, they feel puffed up in their pride about this new religion that they've become a part of, and they feel a little bit better for the first few months, then their health starts to tank. They realize that perhaps eating tofu, wheat, and corn, and all these processed vegan junk foods, eating freaking cornflakes, vegan cornflakes, and eating vegan McDonald's, like Joey Cobbstrong, they realize that maybe this isn't the way to go, so they try other things. Guys like Tim Sheaf went to such extremes, he drank his own pee to try to stay vegan. Which I'm not so sure that that's vegan, Tim. Uh, and all you pee drinkers out there, that is an animal product. All right, um, But these people are going to extremes because they want to figure out a way that the vegan diet can work for them. So they try fruitarianism. And they quickly degenerate. They try... Whole Foods, plant-based, Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. And they realize that Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen isn't really the dozen foods you should eat to stay healthy on a vegan diet. But it's a daily count of how many times you got to go blast ass on the toilet. They try everything that they possibly can to stay vegan, and they cannot do it because their health is failing. But of course, Garth Davis says you were never really vegan. Garth Davis says, these are just a bunch of dumb millennials who are doing extreme raw foods diets. Well, here's a video from Dr. Garth Davis with fully raw Christina. Here's 2014. Let's hear what Dr. Garth Davis has to say with fully raw Christina. Millennial, YouTuber, raw vegan, who he promoted. Hey you guys, it's Christina, and I am excited and honored to be sitting here today with one of the top doctors in Texas and one of the best vegan doctors in Houston, Dr. Garth Davis. Hello. And we are sitting here in his clinic called the Davis Clinic, which is right outside of Memorial Hermann Hospital here in Houston, Texas. And Dr. Davis and I are so excited because we have partnered together to transform health. And I say this because we have created a project where my organic produce co-op and his clinic are going to start recommending and prescribing fruits and vegetables instead of, or in place of, prescription drugs. Dr. Garth Davis. I guess uh, he has no problem with Fully Raw Christina prescribing fruits and vegetables, <laughs> raw fruits and vegetables instead of drugs. But that's 2014, right? So it was a different time back then. It was a much different time back then. He was only a B-cup back then. Therefore, we'll avoid all kinds of food groups. They won't eat soy because they somehow believe soy is bad for you, whereas the science does not show that. It also shows that soy is very good for you, but soy is a great source of amino acids and protein. Great, so a lot, the soy milks now are just loaded with calcium. Soy is a great food, soy is amazing. Soy is one of the worst foods you could possibly eat. The amount of glyphosate used to produce soy is so ridiculous. The amount of glyphosate contamination in soy food is out of control. Soy very, very high in oxalate, which will bind to calcium and create calcium oxalate crystals and kidney stones. You know how many of these ex-vegans have had come to me for help who have dealt with kidney stones after doing whole foods, plant-based, eating lots of spinach and soy and all this junk food. Come on, man. Soy is a great food? I wonder what fully raw Christina would have to say about that. 
Garth Davis. Total hypocrite. Talking about the millennials. Don't listen to the millennials. They're just YouTubers. They were just doing raw food diets. Dude, you promoted raw food diets with Fully Raw Christina just a few years ago. So let's look what else he promotes. Proteinaholic is his book. Garth Davis, MD. How our obsession with meat is killing us and what we can do about it. Rich Roll says it's a book that will help you lose weight, keep it off, and prevent reverse lifestyle disease. A book every health conscious person should own and every doctor should prescribe their patients. Rich Roll, who is the son of an entertainment lawyer, a former entertainment lawyer himself, who has horses in Malibu, says that y'all should eat a vegan diet because of the planet and because of your health. It's just amazing, right? Let's check out an excerpt from Proteinaholics. What's in the book? Protein is not the key to weight loss. It's actually one of the biggest factors behind the obesity epidemic. Well, he must be an expert on the obesity epidemic, right, guys? He's a doctor. What kind of doctor is he? What kind of doctor is Dr. Davis? Well, let's take a look. Dr. Davis graduated Phi Beta Kappa from the University of Texas at Austin, where he was a student government president and was recognized as the most outstanding student at UT. Just the most outstanding student. Wow. Just incredible. He is a bariatric surgeon. He is a certified American board of, uh, certified by the American Board of Surgery and is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and a fellow of the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. Bariatric surgery, guys. So he says that protein is causing the obesity epidemic. And he knows a lot about the obesity epidemic. You know why? Because that obesity epidemic is paying off his debt. It's paying off his student debt. He makes money on people who cannot lose weight with diet. He makes money on people who opt for surgery instead. All right? Sleeve gastrectomies remove about 80% of the stomach. That's what this dude does. It removes people's stomach to help them lose weight. Gastric bypass surgery. That's what this dude's doing. You know what gastric bypass is? It divides the stomach. It divides the stomach in half. Cuts a portion of the small intestine and divides it. <laughs> and twists up your gut to help you lose weight. People who are performing bariatric surgery definitely don't have a conflict of interest here, right? <laughs> This guy's whole income is based around people not knowing how to lose weight, people not knowing how to use a low-carbohydrate approach to manage their weight, people getting unnecessary surgeries and mutilating themselves. But it's for the animals, right? It's sustainable. It's so good for the planet. And protein's bad. Proteinaholics. You know that protein is the most important macronutrient for anybody to eat for fat loss. Protein brings satiety better than any other macronutrient. There are three macros, protein, fat, and carbs. You reduce your carbohydrate intake. It makes it very easy for you to burn body fat. This is why we've been teaching a low-carbohydrate approach for losing fat and for maintaining metabolic health and flexibility for a long time here. You can find more at PrimalEdgeHealth.com. The next Keto and Carnivore Collective is starting on, I think, March 3rd. So we've got about two weeks to sign up for that. It's our community coaching setup where we are actually able to coach the amount of clients that come to us every month, but in a much more structured and much more fun setting because you have access to your coaches through our discord server we use a live discord server and we kind of treat it like a course but you don't have to attend all the meetings in fact they're all recorded you have access to all the information that we provide with uh, to you throughout the entire month and you get to support each other if you're trying to lose body fat if you're trying to get your health back if you're trying to regenerate your gut you need animal foods Animal fats and proteins are the essential parts of the human diet. And plants are optional. But these people want to invert it. They want to tell you we was berry pickers. They want to tell you that the planet wants us to go vegan, that protein is bad, that protein causes diabetes, and that the carbs are your friend. So make up your own mind. The link down in the description below for the Keto and Carnivore Collective. Also check out our books, the Ketogenic Edge Cookbook, 
the training manual for low carbohydrate, paleo, and ketogenic cuisine. It actually teaches you how to make nutrient dense, whole, unrefined keto foods that can allow you to lose body fat effectively and efficiently and burn that fat easily through creating the habits that you can maintain for the rest of your life. The habits of getting sufficient protein, getting the essential fatty acids and essential amino acids you need, and how to do it long term. I've seen so many people lose over 100 pounds in a year on a ketogenic diet. I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with, thousands of clients over the last five years, coaching people how to lose weight easily using a low carbohydrate approach. But guess what? You can't do this vegan. You can't do it on a tofu diet. A lot of people who try to lose weight have already been through many rounds of antibiotics. A lot of people trying to lose body fat have been through the gamut, have tried everything. Their health has failed. Their guts have failed. Veganism has failed them. Getting sufficient protein and teaching your body to burn fat as a metabolic substrate, as a fuel source, which your body stores this fuel source all throughout the body. It, fat is ubiquitous throughout the entire body. The brain's made of cholesterol. Fat is everywhere in your body. Your cell membranes are made of it. Your body wouldn't store this macronutrient in such abundance if it couldn't use it very effectively. Burning fat reduces oxidative stress and damage in the body. Reduces inflammation. Has cognitive benefits as well. Ketones being very, very effective for people with neurodegenerative diseases. As you see manifesting in the vegan community it's just rampant people who are very very young are having clear signs of the physical and mental degeneration that comes with a plant-based diet but we've been teaching people how to do this how to lose that weight and we've been teaching people how to do it without surgery dr garth davis makes his living selling you unnecessary surgeries. But don't listen to these other people because they're just millennials and YouTubers. Listen to Garth Davis, author of Proteinaholic and Bariatric Surgeon. Papa needs a new yacht.